taking instrument development from the lab to the operating room. On this episode of Light Matters, we introduce you to researchers at a biophotonics laboratory in California who are making great strides in the field of fluorescence lifetime imaging. Hello, I'm Justine Murphy, and this is Light Matters for January 2018. Scientists at the Marku Laboratory at the University of California, Davis, are applying their research in fluorescence lifetime imaging to a clinical setting for diagnosis of human diseases. We'll tell you more later in the show. But first, Worcester Polytechnic Institute and Quinn Sigamund Community College have been awarded a $4 million grant by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to create a comprehensive joint photonics laboratory. The lab will support the growth of the integrated photonics industry across the Northeast, while also training and educating a skilled integrated photonics workforce in central Massachusetts. The grant was announced at a ceremony at WPI. So I'm happy to be here today to announce a grant from the M2I2 program of $4,060,000 for a new facility to advance R&D in integrated photonics. The grant will fund a partnership between WPI and QCC for the launch of a Photonics Academy Lab for Education and Application Prototypes, known as LEAP. The facility will support the development of the advanced manufacturing sector. WPI and QCC will establish the state's second LEAP facility, the first is at MIT, with a focus on design and testing of integrated photonic devices, as well as on workforce development. WPI and QCC are both part of AIM Integrated Photonics. Researchers at the University of California, Davis, are making great strides in the fields of fluorescence lifetime spectroscopy and imaging. Their work translates to direct applications in a hospital setting at nearby UC Davis Medical Center in Sacramento. Photonics Media's news editor, Autumn Pilant, takes us to the lab that is developing fluorescence lifetime instrumentation that could potentially help surgeons and clinicians diagnose and treat patients with tumors and cardiovascular disease. Within the walls of the UC Davis Genome and Biomedical Sciences Facility are two rooms known as the Marku Laboratory. It's within the confines of the lab named for Professor and Dr. Laura Marku that students, researchers and scientists and engineers focus on the advancement and development of fluorescence-based technologies for biomedical diagnostics. Uh, we are addressing um, critical uh, societal problems, including uh, cancer, uh, cardiovascular disease, and some of these devices that we develop here on a bench top are translated to clinical settings uh, for uh, real-time, uh, again, lab label-free diagnosis of diseases. In this particular lab, Laura and fellow researchers develop instrumentation used in another area of research, regenerative medicine. We're looking at using fluorescence, in particularly time-resolved fluorescence, to extract fluorescent signatures that might tell us something about the biochemistry of a sample which is being grown in a dish, uh, in a lab, for hopefully future implantation in, in, in humans to solve problems that can't be solved by current conventional techniques. So we're looking at the autofluorescence properties of tissues. And in particular, what I do is work in a tissue engineering project related to the vascular system. And in the other lab, Laura and colleagues study optical properties of tissues and multimodal systems that combine fluorescence techniques with ultrasound and optical coherence tomography. We developed this uh, custom catheter that uh, has both an ultrasound and optical channel. And uh, with that, we can acquire uh, fluorescence lifetime images from the inside of uh, coronaries uh, in vivo uh, in animals. And this is a system that we've also used to look at disease human samples ex vivo in the lab. And we have a great deal of fun working on the bench side, but ultimately what we want to do is we want to see our instruments applied somewhere, either in the hospital or in a, the laboratory of one of our collaborators. And that is exactly what's taking place at the UC Davis Medical Center in Sacramento. Dr. Marcuse's lab has been instrumental in trying to figure out the true makeup of the narrowing of the arteries of the heart by trying to develop a new intravascular ultrasound catheter 
combined with the flim techniques, allowing us to figure out the structural components of what's actually going on inside the arteries of the heart. What we've been using Dr. McCoo's uh, technique for the flim in particular to do a proof of principle, primarily look at delineating or differentiating radiation injury from active or live uh, growing tumor. So we use a um, laser-induced fluorescence to try to use a probe to identify the parathyroid glands during thyroid surgery and basically allow surgeons to have confidently identify parathyroids which are often confused with small lymph nodes or adjoining fat. Tools from the Marku lab are currently being implemented at the medical center in clinical trials with the hopes of commercialization. Reporting for Photonics Media and Light Matters, I'm Autumn Pyland. Thanks Autumn. We now go to the UC Davis Medical Center to see instrumentation from the Marku lab put into action as UC Davis researchers have integrated fiber-based fluorescence lifetime imaging with the Da Vinci surgical robot to diagnose and assess head and neck cancers. So I've had the privilege of working with Dr. Marku for over 10 years. And we've had a series of experiments that started at a very basic science level, looking at bringing her brilliance and technology towards my patients who have head and neck cancer. So currently, we are utilizing this technology in the surgical robot, looking at ways to improve the surgeon's ability to discriminate between normal tissue and cancer tissue, so that hopefully we can do a better job of completely excising the tumor and reducing the chance of that cancer coming back. Uh, we're in the process of a clinical trial where we're very carefully evaluating the opportunities, the challenges, and looking at how this can impact the future of robotic surgery. So we're scanning across the tumor and we're looking at the compositional change within the tumor as detected by her fluorescence techniques. Uh, that map is then compared to the histology once we remove the cancer so that we can look at how closely the results from her non-invasive technology mirror what we currently use as the gold standard, which is H&E staining. The device can operate during brain tumor surgery for designation of surgical margins. In a different configuration, it can be used for breast and prostate cancer diagnosis. Be sure to tune in to Light Matters Extra for a more in-depth look at the work being done at the Marku Laboratory. You can find it at photonics.com. The International Society for Optics and Photonics, or SPIE, is an educational, not-for-profit organization founded in 1955 to advance light-based science, engineering, and technology. Eugene Arthurs has had the title of CEO since 1999 and is set to retire this month. The outgoing CEO leaves us with some encouraging words about the optics and photonics field. It's an exciting time for optics and in many ways if I can go back and replan I will come into optics now instead of be uh, leaving it to some extent. So it's a great day, uh, growing field, very exci exciting. This is the century of the photon and there's a great future ahead. And just a reminder, if you're at Photonics West and BIOS in San Francisco at the end of the month, please join us at our Meet the Editors events. You can meet our Biophotonics Managing Editor, Marsha Stammel, on January 27th at 3 p.m. in booth 8735. And come meet me, Autumn, and all of the Photonics Media Editors on January 30th in booths 846 and 847. Bring your article ideas, suggestions, and questions, plus any ideas you have for upcoming episodes of Light Matters. Well, that's it for this month's show. Tune in next month as we take you to Photonics West and to the Photonics Labs at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, as researchers are actively advancing innovations in integrated photonics. And be sure to follow us on social media for the latest and coolest news and information. Until next time, keep following the photons.